Okay, so good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Is everyone awake? Come on, you've just had breakfast. You should be awake, ready to, ready to take on the day. So I'm glad that we had this get together this morning. Um, as you know, my Christmas was a little different this year. I had to make an emergency trip to Australia to see my dad. Um, and to be honest with you, my plans got messed up a lot. And those who know me well knows not to mess with my plans. Once I have my head into something, I'm focused and I deliver. And so not to have that this Christmas was, was not a good thing for me. However, today I wanted to remind us, first of all, to acknowledge Christmas. So thank you, Josie, you did that. So Merry Christmas. And also to focus our hearts and minds on the new year ahead. You've got notes if you want to take notes, the little handouts, there's pens and handouts on the table. Feel free to fill this out as we go if you want to. But um, hopefully this will be a little encouragement for you this morning. So I saw a post earlier this week on social media and it was talking about that old Irish superstition. I think it's to leave a door open on the last day of the year, right? This is supposed to let all the bad things out of that year, right? So you put all the bad things out in your back door so that the new year can be filled with good luck and that sort of thing. And so this post said, this year, open all your doors, open your front door, your back door, your side doors, and you know what? Just open up all your windows as well. Meaning, of course, that this year was a hard year. And I know for some of you, this year has been a particularly hard year as well, and I get that. But do you know what I've noticed over the years? I've noticed that every year I hear the same thing. I hear, I can't wait for this year to be over. Surely next year is going to be better. Next year, my luck will change. And we hold on to this false hope that next year will be better. And so this morning, I want to intentionally pause and ask yourself, is this true for you? Do you have a habit of wishing the past to just go away and bury it and say to yourself, next year is going to be different? So I have a love-hate relationship with goals. I believe we need them, but we also need to be intentional to work on them and live them out. I was talking to someone a little while ago who insisted on having no goals. Now, both as a psychotherapist and a life coach, goals is the essence of what we do. Without goals, nothing will change and nothing is going to happen. So I said to this client, I said, look, we need to set some goals here. Let's talk about why you have such difficulty in setting goals. And after a while, I discovered that this person had set goals years ago, but didn't or rather couldn't achieve them. And so he was discouraged. And from that point on, he decided that goals were useless and no point. And if that is you this morning, I totally get it. What do they say about New Year's resolutions? They don't last longer than February 1st, right? So we get discouraged, we get disappointed, and we say, what's the point? They don't work anyway. It's easier to open up that back door and let the bad luck go out and just cross your fingers that good luck is going to happen next year. But today I want to talk for just a few minutes about making this coming year 2023 count. In other words, how can you make the most of this coming year? So instead of wishing for good luck, you can have hope, you can have joy, you can have peace and love and a stronger faith that will sustain you to carry you through any life's situation. But this is just the talk. The work starts with you and it will depend on you to make the most of the year 2023. With my clients, we call this being resilient and forward thinking. And there's a few things I want to tell you about that and we find them written in the Bible. And this is exciting. So we're going to dig a little deeper, okay? But first, turn to the person next to you and say, 2023 is going to be the best year ever. Say that to your neighbor. Awesome. 
<laughs> Are you ready? Okay, first, here's the secret sauce. Before we can go into 2023, we need to evaluate and appreciate 2022. Before you can say, next year I want this, next year I want that, we need to acknowledge the blessings that happened to us in 2022. Have you taken time to reflect on the good things or do you put everything in a big pile of garbage and just sweep it away with everything else, the good, the bad and the ugly? Because if you did that this year, then you will most likely do it next year. And you will find yourself in this revolving loop of dissatisfaction, discontentment, and an ungrateful heart. So the first thing I want you to do this morning is write three things that you are thankful for that happened to you in 2022. So take two, two, two seconds to, just to write that down or, or start thinking about three things that happened in 2022 that you are thankful for. Let me tell you my biggest learning of 2022. I belong to a group where we text each other every day. It's part of a mental health program that I'm helping to pilot. And we were asked, what is your biggest learning of the month? And as I reflected on this, I wrote that I learned the value of family and the importance of being there physically, mentally, spiritually when they need you. You see, when I got that call from Australia that my, my dad was sick, my first reaction was, man, am I glad I went back there in August to see him. And I was hesitant to fly back again. Number one, I'm a busy person. I had to put clients on hold, my schooling on hold, and what about the church? And to be honest with you, my dad and I have always had a pact that if he ever died or whatever, don't, he, he's always said, don't waste your money on coming back for a funeral. It's all good. We have this understanding that life is part of death, or death is part of life, sorry. How wrong was I? I feel bad for even thinking twice about not going. My siblings needed me. My aunt needed me. My dad needed me. Life is about relationships. So on my list, I'm grateful to have learned and to have better insight into value, valuing others. In my job, I'm taught to value people. People matter to God and therefore must matter to us. And we can see that, but are we living out what's important? So go ahead and write those three things down if you haven't already. Now, I want you to look at that list, and I want you to say to yourself, these things happened for me, not to me. Just as these good things happened for you, so did the not-so-good things happen for you. When we can look with, at life with a viewpoint of things happening for us and not against us, our perspective can change. And when our perspective changes, transformation happens. And transformation begins with you. And there's three points I want to go through today that I think if you do these, um, 2023 will be the best year ever. Are you ready? Turn to the person next to you and say, are you ready? <laughs> Number one, be a person who values others. And to value others is to serve others. Let's look at Luke 22, 24 to 27. This is where Jesus and his disciples were sitting at the Passover. And this was the last meal together. Um, and Jesus um, was just finishing telling them that um, one of them was going to betray him. Verse 24 says, Then they began to argue among themselves who would be the greatest among them, Jesus told them, in this world, the kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course but not here. And this is the key thing. Jesus says, not here, for I am among you as one who serves. This guy, Albert Switzer, 
He was a theologian, a philosopher. He was a writer back in the 1800s. And I love this quote of his. He says, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I know, the one, only ones among you who will be really happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. The happiest people are not always the most successful, but happy people always serve. Every day, find a way to value and serve others. In the passage that we just read, Jesus was teaching the disciples a vertical way of thinking. The disciples were only thinking horizontally and arguing who was going to be the best and who would sit closest to Jesus. And Jesus said, you want to sit close to me? (laughs) Then serve one another. Jesus didn't say those who read their Bibles the most, those who pray the most, those that say the right things. The one who will be more important is the one who serves. Isn't that incredible? Jesus, the son of God, came to serve. He served because he values you and he values me. So what's an example of this? Let's look at Philippians 2, 3 to 4. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others, but be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for, those, for your own interests, but take an interest in others also. So don't be selfish. Now, I don't know, you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, I'm not selfish. But let me ask you this question. When you see a group photo, what do you do? What makes that photo look really good? Who's the person that you look for in that group photo? You look for yourself, right? And if you look all right, you say, yes, great photo, guys, right? You judge the whole picture, sorry, you judge the whole picture on the way you look. That's who we are. It's, if, if we're not intentional, our selfishness is going to shine through. So how can you value and serve others in 2023? You may be asking yourself, well, how do I do this daily? There are so many ways that you can show value and serve others on a daily basis. And it saddens me, those who call themselves Christians sometimes do this the least. Jesus said, some people will walk with their nose in the air, criticizing, demeaning people, expecting to be served, but uh uh-uh, no way, not you. You are not to do that, he says. You were created to serve and value others. Find a way to do this. Be creative, pray about it, be intentional, and just do it. And we do this because of that Matthew passage that we all know so well. Let's read it. Then the king will say to those on his right, enter, enter. You who are blessed by my Father, that's what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation, and here's why. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was homeless, and you gave me a room. I was shivering, and you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you stopped to visit. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, what on earth are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you, thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and came to you? Then the king will say, I am telling you the truth. Whenever you did one of these things for someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. Jesus values people so much. When we serve others, he takes it personally. I get asked all the time, how do I get close to Jesus? What can I do to feel closer to Jesus? (laughs) That's how you can serve others. Number two, cultivate a gratitude of attitude, a grateful attitude. It surprises me to learn that the mental health strategy is gratitude. One of the key skills that we teach in therapy is to be grateful. Now, I find it a funny concept that we have to learn to be grateful. But we even have exercises to teach clients on how to do this. Why? Because there's been studies shown and proven that gratitude makes us happier and healthier. Now, gratitude, like any emotion, can't really be forced. But we can cultivate our thoughts so that gratitude is more likely to be present in our lives. 
So what we teach to clients in the counseling world is to practice gratitude daily. So it becomes a habit. Ah, I wonder where else we learn about gratitude. That's right. Gratitude is a value that Jesus teaches us. 1 Thessalonians 3, be cheerful no matter what, pray all the time, thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. Why? Because when we are thankful in all circumstances, we will have happier and healthier lives. Look at the things on your list that you were grateful for in 2022. Now I want you to think of three things that you would rather have not experienced. Write them down. Remember to cultivate an un a grateful attitude. We need to give thanks for the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is a skill or habit that will take intentionality, perseverance, and a lot of faith. I kid you not, cancer was not fun. Losing a loved one is not fun. Losing your job or your business hurts. When we grieve, it's hard to be, think to be grateful. I know. But if those studies are true, and if what we read in the Bible is true, we need to learn to cultivate a grateful attitude because when we do, we will experience a happier 2023. How can you make gratitude a daily habit throughout 2023? The third point I want to leave you with this morning that I want you to, to encourage you to strive for is this, create an intentional life. This is something that has changed my life. John C. Maxwell says, Jesus was very clear to say to us that if we want to live an intentional life, we have to know God and we have to know how he works in our lives. Everyone here today is here for a reason. If you want to live a life that is filled with hope, peace, joy, and love, you want to live your best life and his good news, Jesus wants that for you as well. John 10, 10, I have come that you may have life and life abundantly, but it's not just going to come. I will take, it will take intentionality every day. And if you create a, a habit of being intentional, you will find joy in life, I promise. John 15, the last passage for today, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me and bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not, do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. What Jesus is saying here is that life is a partnership with him. The more we yield to the spirit, the more abundance we will have. In the new year, I'm going to be doing a series on yielding to the spirit. But for today, I want to leave you with what John Maxwell calls the rule of five. The rule of five is this. If you have a tree in your backyard and you have an ax and you swing at that tree, with the ax five times per day, what will eventually happen? The tree will fall down, exactly. The rule of five is when you have a goal and you have a tool and every day you use that tool to work towards your goal, you will be successful. Whatever your goal is at work or at home or in the church, consistent daily habits is what is needed to get you where you want to go. John's rule of five is this. He writes every day, he's written over 100 books. So every day he writes, every day he reads, 
Every day he thinks, every day he files, and every day he prays. He does those five things no matter what. If it's his birthday, he'll do those five things. If he's sick, he'll do those five things. They're five things that he does every single day. And that is why he is where he is. So if you want a better marriage, what are five things you need to do each day to have that better marriage? If you want a better career, what are five things you need to do each day to better yourself, to get that better career? If you want an organized home, what are five things you need to do each day to get your home organized? If you want a closer relationship with Jesus, what are five things you need to do each day to have a closer relationship with Jesus? Do you understand this concept? You keep working every day towards being the person you want to be. And I promise 2023 will be happier, healthier, and a wonderful year. Do you want abundance life for yourself, for your family, for your workplace, for your home? I want this. And I want this for you. So let's be intentional. So on the last section of your notes, write five things that you can do each day to help you be the person that God created you to be let's close with this song this song is called um god is in our story and i just thought it was very fitting for today um so just just um listen to it look at the words and um i hope it means something to you and then we'll see you at the end this torn up pages in this book words that tell me i'm no good chapters that define me for so long but the hands of grace and endless love dusted off and picked me up told my heart that hope is never gone
story. He's in your story. And he wants to do a work in you in 2023. Will you let him? Will you partner with him to make 2023 a wonderful year, a great year, the best year ever? But it's going to take intention, right? It's going to really be waking up in the morning, asking yourself, how can I value others? How can I be grateful during the storms and even in the good times? And how can I make this day count? He's with you. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time of the year where we can reflect and, um, and really be thankful for what has happened in 2022. And Father, as we look forward to 2023, we ask that you be with us. We ask that you'll give us the strength and the peace and the resilience to wake up every day and say, what do you want me to do today? What Help us to be intentional in our work life, our home life, in our relationships, in people that we meet in the streets. Help us to really value others because you value them. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming, guys.